Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 83 or 84 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Probably one of those two. Might have nailed it, might have fucked it up. Who cares? The point is, guys, that it's uh, I'm recording this on Friday, so hey... If you're a, if you're a Patreon supporter, quick little fucking plug, you'll be this will be a spearhead Friday night f- for you. I mean, <laughs> that sounds shit. <laughs> it's this the only reason that name works is because it comes out on a Sunday. If it was fucking spearhead Wednesdays, spearhead Thursdays, that sounds garbage. Spearhead Friday night sounds even the worst of all. But you know. Six bucks a month, one, even a dollar a month gets you the podcast early, so you can uh, you can really getting the therapy from Miscellaneous Bit at the End way faster than anybody else can. Because if you listen to Miscellaneous Bit at the End on Friday night, you can book in an appointment for Sunday because normally they get booked out on Sundays because everybody, all the regular people, get podcasts on Sundays, and they're like, "Fuck, I need I need to see a, a suicide counselor." So you can give them a call on Friday when the lines are free. And uh, <laughs> it's the shittest plug for Patreon ever. But yeah, Google it if you want to help out what I do. Right, what did I want to talk about this week? I know, but before I get into that, excuse me for a second. <sighs> Woo! All right, so uh, what did I want to talk about? Um, dude, I, I've caused a massive controversy in the podcast group. Uh, there's, a, there's a big battle going on. Between Coldplay fans and Coldplay haters. And no matter which side of the fence you're on, if whether you're a Coldplay fan or a Coldplay hater, I think that every single person was incredibly surprised that uh, my Coldplay rant did not end with me saying, just kidding, I hate them, like everything else I talk about on this podcast. But no, it's not a joke. It's still going. I still love Coldplay, and I'm pretty sure that I always will because they're an incredible band, okay? And you know what I've realized? I, 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 I wasn't kidding either. I bought the album. It's on my phone, and I've been listening to it on repeat for this week, and I think that Coldplay has changed my life. And finally coming, stepping out of the closet and admitting that I'm a Coldplay fan has really affected my life in an incredibly positive way. Because as you guys know, I, I deal with uh, anger issues and just frustration and stress all the time because I, for some reason, massive problems I find a little bit funny, but little shit I can't get over. I'll give you an example. Here's an example of when I needed some Coldplay and it fixed my mood, okay? I have, as you guys know, I've been working on a secret project behind the scenes, um, which I'll talk about later in the podcast, but uh, it's been taking up a lot of my time. I've been in in a fucking office going in a f- multiple days a week and working hard on this thing, trying to make sure that it's perfect by the time we announce it and all this fucking horse shit that I'm not really used to, you know, working with other people and offices and all that, you know, I'll talk about it later. Basically, I've been going into this thing and and trying to stay on top of online content and performing every single night, getting ready for the special and the New Zealand tour. So just being really fucking stressed and doing too much stuff and going to the gym, which I have completely fucked up this week, but um, I've still managed to put on weight. Um, I've just been very stressed and I got home from this thing that we're working on. I filmed a video in the morning. Uh, I've also been vlogging all day and I had a gig later that night and I had about half an hour to sit at home and get changed before I had to leave to the gig. Otherwise, I would be what be really late. And I was sitting home being like, I can't do it. I can't do the gig. I'm too stressed. I'm doing too much shit. I need a fucking sleep. I'm not going to get home until midnight if I do the gig. I need a fucking edit, blah, 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 just complaining. And then I was I was just stressing out and freaking out. And then I was like, you know what will calm me down? Some fucking Coldplay. <laughs> so I, I I whacked on my, uh, my Beats Studio wireless headphones that I paid too much money for. That stressed me out too. I was like, why did I buy these? Why did I spend $400 on fucking headphones? What a ripoff. I don't even... I don't even like music that much. And then I got out my phone, and the phone case is is shit. And I was like, this fucking shitty phone case sucks. Why did I spend $2.50 on a phone case? 
Dude, my phone case is so bad. I got one of these clear ones, right? I got it from Kogan, and it was literally, it's like a little rubber thing, and it's clear, and I bought it, and it was free shipping. I'm like, $2.50 for a phone case, and it's clear. How can I say no? I bought it. I've had it for as long as I've had my phone, and uh, because it's rubber, let me just say, I'm pretty sure that this thing is no longer a phone case. It's, uh, what's those science things where they grow fucking germs in? And then they go, oh, look at that germ. Under a microscope. <laughs> look at that germ. That's not what scientists say. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? A fucking uh, dish. Pizza dish. <laughs> a petri dish. Isn't that what it's called? I gotta Google it. I'm pretty sure it's a petri dish. Fucking Petri dish. This has ruined the joke that I was going to make. It's a Petri dish, okay? I got pretty close. At first we had dish, then we had pizza dish, and then we got to the, the truth of it, which was a Petri dish. Anyway, pretend that I didn't have to figure out what the fuck a Petri dish is, and you haven't heard all of that garbage of me being a moron. Let me get to this banger joke, the punchline, right? I'm pretty sure it's not a phone case anymore, it's just a fucking Petri dish, because no shit, it used to be clear, now it's kind of like, uh, man, I don't even know what colour to call this shit, but I can see mould on it, like I see spots of mould on this uh, thing, and there's mould on my phone, oh, this is gross, I just took it off, That's I gotta throw that out, that's fucking yuck, I'll post a photo of it in the podcast group on Sunday, if you wanna check it out, uh, and you can all yell at me about getting a new phone case. But anyway, that's so my phone case pissed me off and I put my headphones on that I paid too much money for and I open up my Coldplay album and uh, then I just hit play and the first song that plays, it's a beautiful world. Eh, eh. I'm like, what the fuck? It, it is a beautiful world, Coldplay. I agree, whatever the lead singer's name is. I agree with you. And I listened to this song and I, it completely changed my mood. I listened to the whole song, I listened to two songs of this Coldplay album that I bought, and I was like, you know what, what the fuck am I complaining about? I tell dick jokes for a living. That's my job. It's my dream since I was 12, and now I can buy food with it. I mean, yeah, I live with my parents in my tiny fucking room, and I'm poor as shit, but I get to perform what I love doing every single night, and I get to make videos, and I get to yell in my bedroom about fucking phone cases, and it's my job. I have nothing to complain about. Who gives a fuck that I'm basically working two full-time jobs? I love this shit. And I left my house, and I listened to the Coldplay album, and then I, I got to the fucking gig. And it was it completely fixed my mood, and I smashed it. I demolished that night. I fucking killed it. And I was like, you know what? Thank you, Coldplay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coldplay. You've really... Dude... My girlfriend's been telling me that I need to go to see a fucking therapist for like a cup, at least a couple of sessions to, to teach me how to deal with uh, stress and anger. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck a therapist. I was going to listen to some It's all yellow. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I mean, what do I need a fucking therapist for when I got like 10 Coldplay albums? If this shit stops working and it's just a temporary fix, I'll just buy another album. I've got like... This shit, I reckon, is probably going to work on me for a month. So I've got 10 more Coldplay albums. I have at least until the end of 2018 to to go through Coldplay albums. I mean, fuck, I hope they haven't released any shit ones. Otherwise, I might turn into a school shooter. But you know what I'm saying. Coldplay really improves my mood. So that's an example of when Coldplay fixed my mood. And that was just me getting mad about little shit that didn't matter at all. No, it doesn't matter. Who cares, Right? Oh, my phone case is weird, and I'm busy, and I'm stressed, and uh, I have a gig tonight. Little shit, that's what gets me. I can't handle little shit. Whereas big things that go wrong, I just think is hilarious. For example, when I was going to this gig, I'm for someone who does not drive, I am the worst at public transport. And Melbourne has good public transport, which leads me to believe that I must just be a fucking idiot. There's, you are given so many tools in Melbourne to use public transport correctly. You, I have an app on my phone where I can put in my starting location and the exact address. Like, not, even, not a station, not a tram stop, the street address. And the app will tell me, you need to catch this train, then this tram, and then switch here. And 
it t- gives me exact fucking specifications of how to get there and how long it will take. And you would think that giving a human being that level of specific, easy to understand information would mean that I would never be late. You would be wrong because I'm a, f- I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm just stupid. I can't, I just, you know what it is? I nail trains. I'm great at trains. I can fucking nail a train. But as soon as you have to make the switch from a train to a tram or a train to a bus, I don't know what it is, but I can't do it well. I just can't, I can't work it out. I always, always fuck it up if I have to change to a tram. And I, and if I see that I have to change to a bus, I, 90% of the time, I just don't go. I hate the bus, not taking the bus. It vibrates, it drives around, you know, I might spew on the bus and then the driver might get, want me to fucking spew on his dick. I just don't like a bus, okay? I don't mind a tram, but there's, I'm definitely not going to do it correctly. So, this gig, I was doing uh, the Resistance Cafe, it's this nice little underground room, you'll see it in my vlog that I filmed, it should come out, who the fuck's calling me? Hey Luke, welcome to the podcast, you're the first caller we have this evening, how are you going mate, what did you have to say? Not too bad, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, uh, what's, can you guess this sound? The prize is a th- is ten thousand dollars, Luke. If you can guess this sound, is it you banging your keyboard? Oh, it's my ten thousand dollars. Are you actually recording the podcast? Yeah, I am, and you've just won ten thousand dollars, mate. What are you going to spend oh the money God. on? I'm so happy. Thank you. This is this is the only reason why I called you. I didn't even need to speak to you. It just felt like. I don't know, I felt lucky. Anyway, thanks very much. For, you're also, I'm recording my podcast right now, by the way. Oh, really? Are you? Oh, nah, it oh. would be good, though, if I was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. Let me pause the podcast and we can talk on the phone about this thing. All right. And and we're back, okay? Welcome back, Luke, to the podcast. Have you spent your money yet? Welcome back. We just talked about some top secret stuff. Lewis is in the CIA. Um, he's part of the lizard people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, wait, was that supposed to be secret? Sorry. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much for having me on Spearhead Sundays. I will not spend my $10,000 wisely. Um, and, uh, yeah, listen to Memoirs of a White Guy on iTunes. Uh, yeah, listen to Luke's podcast and please support me on Patreon because ten thousand uh, dollars is uh, I'm, I'm not getting that much a month. So I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna need to ramp the Patreon money up to ten thousand dollars just for this month, and then you guys can all quit. So please support me on it because I really need to give Luke his prize money. I really hope you cut this bit out of the podcast. This has been about four out of ten in humor wise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving it in. See you, mate. <laughs> Bye. All right. Anyway, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, trams, all right? I hate trams, okay? Sorry about that just fucking idiot calling me. I should have told him I was recording it. Oh, man, I need to leave soon. Anyway, what am I saying? Trams, okay, so I got on the train to go to this gig, yeah? And uh, it was the, the fucking pod, the, the public transport app was like, you need to get off at this station and then you catch the tram. And I was like, sweet, I can do that. No joke. I was enjoying I was I was enjoying Coldplay so much that I was vibing along to it. I was fucking listening to this Coldplay album. I got halfway through the album and I realized, fuck, I missed my train stop. <laughs> because I was vibing out to Coldplay too much. So I had to I, I only missed it by one. So I missed it and then I got off and then I looked on the app again and then the app was like, alright, you just need to get on. And I missed my train stop. It means I was going to be late to the gig. And I was like, I just thought that was funny. Like, it's a, bi- it's a big problem to be late to a show that you're on. But I was like, ah, whatever. That's hilarious. I missed a fucking thing because I was listening to Coldplay. I'll talk about that on the podcast. Anyway, so I get off at the next stop. And it was like, it's fine. You just need to take one tram and then take another tram. And you'll, you should get there. And you'll only be 10 minutes late. I'm like, cool, sweet. So I go to the spot. I wait for the tram. I get on the tram. It takes off. I'm listening to Coldplay. Again, <laughs> again, because I've listened to fucking Coldplay, I missed my tram stop. So I missed it twice, and then I'm like, fuck. So I, I, get, I missed this one by three stops, which is like one Coldplay song. So I must have been, I don't know, would have been a real banger of, of one. It must have been um, fucking 
I must have been listening to the spies. They're all spies. <laughs> anyway, so I get off the fucking tram. <clears throat> and then uh, I'm, I missed it by three stops. So I'm like, all right, fine. I'll just walk back three stops. Little did I know, that's a huge walk. And the tram, what I should have done is cross the road and gone on a tram going in the opposite direction because uh, two trams passed me while I was walking. I'm like, fuck. That means I'm, I definitely would have been way quicker to do that. But I didn't do that because I'm an idiot. But still, I was not mad. Like, this would piss anybody else off. But I just thought it was fucking funny that I had missed now one train, one tram stop, and then didn't get on the opposite direction because I thought I could walk faster than a tram. Like, if I could walk faster than a tram, why the fuck would anyone get on one <laughs> ever? Idiot, right? So then I, go, I get back to the, the tram stop that I was initially supposed to get off at. I get off it, and uh, I was, and then there was another a tram going. So there's one tram going one way, and then there was one going left. I had to get on the one going left. So I'm waiting at this tram stop. It was like I'm like, now I'm now like fucking twenty minutes late to this gig. I text the guy. Uh, for the second time, saying, hey, you know how I said I was going to be 10 minutes late? Well, now I'm going to be even later. And he gets back to me, he's like, fuck, man, I put you on later in the night. Now I've got to put you on even later in the night. When are you going to be here? And I said, oh, I should be here at this time. So anyway, waiting for the, the second tram that I had to get. That would be that would the, the final tram, right? So I'm on the right side of the road. I'm like, oh, fuck, it should be here at like uh, 7.44. But all I can see is a tram... On the other side of the road. But obviously that's not my tram. And then that tram goes. And I look off into the distance. And then I get up my Google Maps. I'm like, oh. That was the tram I was supposed to get on. So now I miss fucking three. Miss my train stop. Miss my tram stop. Miss the third fucking tram that I was supposed to get on. So now I'm going to be fucking incredibly late. So I text him for the third time, and I'm going to say, hey man, you know I said I was going to be late, and then you moved me back, and then I said I was going to be even later, and then you moved me back, and then you, then, well, it turns out I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be even, even later than that, and this one is like, this, the third tram that I missed, so, first stop I missed, 10 minutes late, second stop I missed, that'll make me another 20 minutes late, so I'm half an hour late, and then the third one that I missed, no shit, I'm going to be an hour late now, so, that should make me angry. The guy running the gig, freaking out. I've missed my tram stop. I've been on public transport for an hour longer than I should be. But I just thought it was the funniest shit. Like, <laughs> lol, I'm an idiot. Missed all my tram stops. This is a big waste of time. I was stressing before I left about how little time I have at the moment because I'm working on so many things. But now that I've got a big time-wasting issue, I just think it's funny. So anyway, I made it to the gig, um, inc incredibly late, um, but I, I, I was listening to Coldplay on the way and I fucking smashed it, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go, guys, this is insight into my life of how I get pissed off at uh, tiny, little, insignificant things, but massive problems in my life, I just think are hilarious. Like, dude, if my fucking uh, dog got hit by a car in front of my eyes, I'd probably be like, ah, it's funny, but God forbid somebody text me and say, hey, can um, that photo that you took, can you take it from another angle? That'll ruin my fucking week. <laughs> so I've uh, recently, guys, uh, thank you for your feedback on the podcast ads, by the way. 100% of the people said go for it and do it. As long as you can make them funny, just do the ads. You've got to pay for this thing somehow. So I think between Patreon and podcast ads, hopefully I should be breaking even on this thing until Patreon picks up or, you know, you know, you know what I, what a fucking situation is. Um, so I'm going to do podcast ads. So I got back to the company that reached out to me and I was like, yep, let's do it. So I signed contracts and, and what I thought was pretty funny was, um, I read through the contract, blah, blah, blah. And then there came time to sign it. It was a good contract. I'm like, yep, I'll sign that. And then they had like three places for me to write. So the first one, I had to write my full name, Lewis Spears. The, th the third place, I had to do my signature, whatever, looks like shit. But the, the place in the middle, I had to write my title. I was like, what do you, what's, what do you mean, title? Mister? Is that what that means? I guess I'm a mister. But then I looked at, he, because he signed it, obviously. So his name was, whatever, fucking Peter Jones. Uh, and then his signature was the third one. But then the second one was like CEO. 
I'm like, oh, like title within the business. I understand. <clears throat> and then I was like, hang on, I don't have a fucking title. I'm, I'm the guy. And then I thought, well, what does CEO mean? Because I'm pretty sure that he is also the only guy that works in his business. So obviously he's just been like, oh, I guess I'm the CEO. Like if you run the business, you make up the titles. So it doesn't have to be CEO or ma- like he could have been CEO. He could have been managing director. He could have called himself whatever the fuck he, he wanted because it's his business and it doesn't change his role, the title of it. So I was like, you know what? In my business, I'm the fucking legend. <laughs> So I signed it, Lewis Spears, title, legend, and then my signature, sent it off to him, and he just goes, thanks mate, this is great, looking forward to working together, thanks for signing the contract. I'm like, oh, see, it doesn't mean anything, you can be whatever the fuck you want, so I'm li- I'd like to officially announce, ladies and gentlemen, that not only, uh, I'm no longer a comedian, in, in the biz- within the business of Lewis Spears Incorporated, the guy at the top is me, and my role He's fucking legend. So uh, that's how I'm signing all future contracts is as legend. And if, if you know, five years down the track, if I ever need to hire someone to manage all of the shit that I'm doing, all of my tours and my merch and fucking podcast ads, if I need a guy to manage that, he's going to be the legend. And then I'm going to have a title above him called the sick cunt. And that's how I'm going to sign all of my contracts from now on. All right, what else has been happening in my life? Oh, that's fucking... I gotta do that fucking postal vote for gay marriage, don't I? Oh. I, I'm not gonna fucking preach here, ladies and gentlemen, but I just don't... I don't understand. I don't understand why you, you can't let uh, gay people get married. I don't get it. The only argument that makes sense to me is the religious one, which is like, marriage, according to God, is between a man and a woman. But then I'm like, well, hang on a second. Surely, if that's the the fucking, if the religious thing of the man and a woman, because God said so, if, and you're protecting the religious sanctity of marriage, that's the only argument that makes sense. And it doesn't make, like, it doesn't make sense to me, because I didn't believe that shit, right? But it makes sense why people hold that belief, if you get what I mean. Like, I understand why... Like, like I don't understand why people think the, wor- the the Earth is flat, but I could potentially understand why people think vaccines are evil, just because, oh, I'm scared for my kids. I, I, I don't understand this, so I'm scared of it. I understand that. It, I mean, it's, it's wrong, but I understand why people think it. I understand why religious people are against the gay marriage thing, but what gets me about that is surely... If that's your argument, the sanctity of marriage is already ruined because we let atheists marry and we let Jewish people marry and we let Muslims marry and we let fucking people who believe in the flying spaghetti monster marry. Surely an an atheist couple getting married is way worse than a Christian lesbian couple getting married. Right? I mean, isn't, isn't the main thing that you fucking think that God's a cool dude and you, 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 I don't know, you go to church and you give them all your money and they spend it on a new fucking Mercedes for the pastor's wife? Isn't that the main thing? Not where you put your fucking dick? Anyway, like I said, I'm not here to preach. Uh, I'm voting yes, uh, because I just don't give a fuck. I, I think it's, I think it's just, it's just shit because especially because you know, we're supposed to be a secular society and the only argument against gay marriage is, is uh, a religious one. And it doesn't make sense. Let them do what the fuck they want. I don't understand. It just doesn't make sense. We're the only like first world country that doesn't let fags fucking kiss each other in a, in a, in a tuxedo while someone goes, yeah, congratulations. The government owns you. And if you guys split up, one of you will keep the fucking house. Let him do it. We're all going to put up with that shit. Just let him go for it. Who cares? I don't know. I just... <clears throat> I just don't care. And have you seen that one little gay dude going around who he he's, he's gay and he doesn't believe in gay marriage and as soon as the anti-gay marriage people found that guy, he immediately became the poster boy for the no campaign. It's hilarious. It's like, oh my god, finally a gay person agrees with this. Hey everyone, look at this. We're not homophobic. We have a gay guy. And it's like, dude, 
I don't know. I, I think I just think that I just think yeah, you should just fucking let people fuck who they want. Let people do whatever they want with their life. If you don't want to get married, just don't fucking get one. I've yet to see I've seen I've yet to see an argument against gay marriage that like when you really look into it doesn't that doesn't come down to yeah, yucky. <laughs> Like, like every fucking thing of, like the 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 family argument is like, oh, we can't let gay people fucking adopt kids because it's bad. They, they can already adopt kids. Same sex couples can already adopt kids. So it's it's not about that. That's just a reason that you have given. I mean, if you really cared about that, you would be have you would have been campaigning from fucking, you know, three years ago, saying don't let them adopt kids. It's not about that. That's just you being like, yeah. Yucky. What's another reason I can use that kind of sounds legitimate until you look into it? What's another one? Fucking the 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 God doesn't like it one. That one also doesn't make sense because, you know, we let atheists get married. And to me, from a religious perspective, that seems way worse than getting to, than letting gay people marry. Is some people who thinks God's not real. I mean, that's way worse, right? According to the Bible. So that one just comes down to, yeah. Two dudes kissing. It's gross. <laughs> What's another one? The fucking... Oh, yes voters are so abusive. Yeah, they are. I'll say that. I'll, I'll agree with that one. A whole bunch of yes voters are fucking cunts. Whenever people think that they're right or they, they're fighting for a righteous thing, it just turns them into cunts. And it's like, oh, people who, who vote no... They're, they're homophobic, evil fucking people. And I don't necessarily... I, I, I think there's a little bit of homophobia mixed in there, but they're not fucking evil. They're just people who go, Yeah, yucky. Two girls holding hands in the street. Yeah, I don't, I would never do that for me, so I think other people shouldn't do it because it's stinky poos. That's all that it is. I don't think it's fucking... There's, obviously, there's a few people who hate gay people and hate lesbians and all that kind of shit, but I think majority of majority of the reason why people are voting no is because when they think about it, they go, yeah, yucky. <laughs> like, I talked to my dad about it. He's not registered to vote, so he doesn't get a say, but I was like... Because I, I know that... I know for sure my dad doesn't hate gays, but he definitely has that, ugh, gross, two dudes kissing, yuck! He definitely has that in his head. So I was like, "If what, what are you voting? He goes, oh, well, I'm not ready to sit. I'm like, oh, well, what, if you were voting, what would you vote? And he goes, and he says, well, on the surface, yes, but underneath the surface, no. And that's just typical, vague shit from my dad that I don't think he could even explain. I tried to get him to explain it to me. He couldn't. But basically what I take away from that is, yeah, I think people should be able to do what they want. But when I think about it, I go, yeah, yucky. That's, I think that's just the, that's the argument. That should be the real slogan for the no campaign. Yuck. Two dudes holding hands and kissing on a picnic blanket. Poo. That's gross. That's what the no campaign slogan should be. Because their slogan right now sucks. Like the yes campaign is like, do it for love and equal rights. And they got a million slogans and rainbows and shit. They're like, their marketing campaign is fucking on point. The no campaign's marketing sucks. Their main slogan is, it's okay to say no. It's, oh, that's a shitty slogan. It's just okay. I mean, that, that, that doesn't make me, that makes me want to not vote at all. It's okay. I mean, if you told me, that it was fucking radical to vote no. I mean, I might consider denying someone else their human rights. If the no campaign, like, started off with a skateboarder with a backward snapback and, like, rock music, like, -de 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 and he was, like, rolling down the street doing kickflips and shit, and he goes, hey, dude, it's fucking radical to vote no. Fuck gay marriage. -de 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 and he went down the street. Man, I might consider it. Or, like, a dude on a surfboard. He, he, just, he just goes through like a fucking massive barrel and he nails it. He does like a few fucking turns around and he absolutely nails the mount and then the dismount and he, he surfs all the way in. Like, you know when you see someone surf from the wave onto the beach and then they jump off the board and then they keep running because they got that momentum and you just see that and like, that's so fucking cool. I wish I could do that. If you saw a surfer with dreadlocks, like, nail the barrel, and then he gets off and he runs down the beach towards the camera and he goes, Hey, man, hang ten. It's fucking radical to say no. <laughs> I would totally vote no. 
But it's just some old dude being like, yeah, man. I mean, it's all right. It's pretty good. It's just okay to vote no. I'm like, ah, well, I don't want just okay. You really got to... I want, I want amazing. It's fucking radical, dude. Vote no. Don't let the gays marry. It's fucking sick, man. I'd consider it. But um, at, at the moment, it's okay to vote no. It just doesn't cut it. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It just doesn't cut it. It's just not good enough. So I'm going to have to vote yes purely on the marketing campaigns. I don't care about the issue. What really gets me is whoever has the most flashing lights and the loudest ads. Because clearly that seems to work for Spotify. <laughs> Um, okay, so I need to leave in a bit. I think I'm going to do the worst part of the podcast with Jazz because I have two updates. I've got an update about the bus driver and I have an update about the guy who uh, fucked someone else's wife. So I think um, Jazz will be great for those two. So I'm going to wait till I see. I think I'm seeing her tonight. So I'm going to get her to do Miss Lane's Billy. And just before I get into that and then we time travel um, ahead like fucking six hours or eight hours in my day. Um, I wanted to say that the secret project that... I'm working on is going to be announced next Sunday. So next Sunday, there will be two podcasts. There'll be a regular one like this, where I yell at myself and laugh at my own dumb jokes and talk about Coldplay. Maybe I might be sick of it by then. Probably not. Best band ever. Um, (laughs) And then there will be one after that, that'll go for about 10 minutes, um, just announcing the thing. And it'll be all over my social media. If you like me on anything, you will see it. And maybe I'll do a video about, Oh, we probably should do a video. I don't know, I'll figure that out, um, but yeah, I'm announcing it on Sunday, a few a few people were asking if it's like the crowdfund, no, it's not going to cost you anything, <clears throat> you don't have to do anything, it's just a new thing that I'm doing, it's a big step for me in uh, my career, and it's something very, very new, uh, and I'm super excited about, uh, I've been killing myself over this thing for the last m- two months, um, and it's been really, really quick, we didn't think it would happen this fast. But uh, again, blah, 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 I'll talk about it on Sunday. That's when I'm announcing it, and it's not going to cost you anything. We're just doing some more shit, and it's a big opportunity, and I think you guys are going to be like, oh, fuck, he's doing that? That's different. It could, this, this could be good. It could suck, but it's probably going to be great. <laughs> so that's how I'm hoping that you guys will do it. Anyway, I uh, am about to go to the thing that I'm um, talking about. So um, I'll be back with Jazz and we're going to do the worst part of the podcast. Also, New Zealand tour is coming up. Book tickets, uh, that'll be in October. In a, in a few weeks, actually. So yeah, I will see you in uh, a millisecond for you, but about eight hours for me, all right? Time travel on. Time travel off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it turned out to be way more than eight hours. It turned out to be about two days. So I'm recording this on Sunday with... The beautiful Jasmine, how are you? Yeah, I'm alright, how are you? Yeah, I'm great. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to, I've got two updates here for Miscellaneous Bit at the End, and I thought that you would be great well, for these. What? We're doing Miscellaneous Bit at the End. Yes. We were having such a nice weekend that I thought I would fucking ruin it. Did I do something to you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't have much time. We gotta get in this. We'll get it out of our. But did I did I forget an anniversary or make your dinner wrong? Or... Oh, you've probably done something to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We'll just bite the bullet and we'll do miscellaneous bit at the end. So I've told you about the last. I'll do a quick recap for the listeners. Last week I had a, a lovely girl uh, email in, and uh, she was having a bit of trouble with her bus driver because she found a guy on Tinder. Had uh, some consensual sex with him. Yeah, and then I've heard this story. This is horrible. Found out that uh, the guy was her bus driver. Uh, she has extreme motion sickness and car sickness, and she often throws up on the bus. Turns out the bus driver also has a bit of a fetish for women throwing up. So he starts driving the bus recklessly every time she's on the bus to make her vomit. But on the plus side, she's getting free bus tickets. <laughs> Can I just say, this story is so far-fetched yeah. that it makes me think that perhaps this is just some creepy dude whose fetish is to hear you read out this story about a girl No, vomiting. because she tweeted at me and I had a look at her Twitter and it's a real account. Like, it's been tweeting for years. So, and the name is the same. It's it's no, no joke. so weird. It just doesn't sound like something that would happen. I just don't think people can make this shit up. Anyway, so the bus driver was like, I'll keep giving you free tickets, but only if you vomit on my dick. 
that was the and she was like what do i do <laughs> and i said women are angels because who else would consider doing that we don't deserve you so i don't understand why you would get me on the podcast for this because what insight because i possibly have oh i don't know i haven't read this, this email situation. yet she's got an update oh there's an update okay yeah, i haven't okay. read it yet so Hey, Lewis, thanks again for your advice. I'll try to keep it short this time, but quite a bit has happened. This is how my week has gone so far. Oh, no. Monday, I tried the bike idea you suggested. I told her she should ride to, to university instead of the bus drive ride. I tried the bike idea you suggested. However, I've decided to never do it again because two hours on a bike with heavy books and a laptop in the morning through country lanes was miserable as fuck. I got home that night and I was ready to say, fuck it, I'm vomiting on his dick oh my God. because I'm an idiot and, well, I'm not very good at actually listening to advice. And your first piece of advice had me like, dude, fuck no, but then common sense kicked in and I did not do it. That's good. Yeah, and you can't ride what for two hours. Advice? My advice was to, uh, to blackmail him and say, if you keep making me vomit, I'll tell people and make you lose your job. Oh, okay. Uh, my first piece of advice, don't vomit on his dick because I was saying that if you... Mm. If you do do that, that's not where it ends, okay? Rule number one, just if you can, avoid vomiting on dicks. <laughs> it's just, you don't have to do it. It's just a general life rule. <laughs> for, for a free bus ticket. It's not worth it. It's not even like a free, I mean, if it's a car, ladies, oh, consider no, it. Oh, no, can't drive in a car, right? Because of her motion sickness? That's true, yeah. yeah. Okay. So he would get her the car then. <laughs> Yeah, and then he'd be like, I want to watch you drive that thing. <laughs> this is like some extreme 50 grades, 50 shades of grey kind of shit over a bus ticket. It's, it's At least fucked. in 50 shades, she got like $20,000 in her bank account. That's true. <laughs> okay, so what's happening? Is that the end? Tuesday. Uh, oh, okay. I paid $10 for the bus, or she paid for a ticket. I told Steve, the bus driver, it would be greatly appreciated if he didn't purposefully shake the bus. And then it was the worst bus journey by far, and puke happened. What a cunt! So he's you asked him not to, and he did it even more. It's probably in his fetish that f- for her to ask. So it's him a not rape to. vomit fetish now. Yeah, it's a rape. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, there'll be like some tentacle shit in there. <laughs> I know he's going to throw an octopus on you on Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, a trainee nurse that works in the city I go to uni in was a star, and he helped me just keep help help keep me distracted to stop me from vomiting any more than I already was. But it was still dreadful, and I was pretty sure every other passenger hated me. But I'd like to hate me too at this point. Yeah, I would hate, I would hate you too. Oh, there's that chick that vomits on the bus every day. This sucks. I'm just trying to get to work. I've got to deal with her being like <laughs> every day. Oh, yeah. Fuck that. Poor girl. I know. Wednesday, Steve was not there. Instead, a lovely old lady was driving and she had apparently been warned about me. The woman was an angel, like I wish she was my grandma. She was super sweet and fuck, I reckon she was a a bus god because I (laughs) shit you not, it was the smoothest ride ever. No vomit on both trips. I literally only felt queasy once. Anyway... Apparently, my fellow passengers hated Steve's driving so much that they bombarded the company with complaints and got him fired. (laughs) But that's not it. The nurse listens to your podcast also. Oh, this is great. What? What? We went to go get coffee. Wait, how how is this story real? This podcast is the best thing that I do. I just, I can't believe that that many people listen to your podcast. There's no way this is fake. This is too fucking weird to be fake. Ugh. And okay. her, her, I checked her email and her Twitter. It's fucking real. Yeah, but on her Twitter, did it say that she's a fiction writer? It just seems so <laughs> far. Fu- okay. <laughs> we'll but that's not it. The, doubt. What happened next? the nurse listens to your podcast also. And so he obviously knows how much of a, of a mad fuck this woman is. Yeah. Because she was, give, she was giving away roots on Tinder like it's nothing. <laughs> and she's like, well, dude, if this girl's considering vomiting on the bus driver's dick, I could definitely get anal out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, all right, that's not it. The nurse listens to your podcast also. We went to go get coffee and he mentioned how crazy it was that the bus driver would do that because of a fetish. Here it comes. Mm. I would never do that, but this is mine. Uh, I hadn't mentioned anything about Steve or his fetish. And there was like, and then was like, what the hell? So, 
Oh, so she was like, oh, how did you know about this? Yeah. And then he had to explain he knew the story from a podcast and, well, I've got a date this weekend with him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Keep up the great work, you cunt, and hopefully I'll be able to see you live one day. Can't wait for Death Threats Don't Scare Me. Have a shit one, Sarah. Thank you very much, Sarah. That's actually a real name, too. I didn't make that up. Well, you should have changed it. You shouldn't have told everyone. This is no, why she the nurse said, knew. She said this her name was Sarah. Oh, it's her fucking fault. Oh. And you know what? Without, without me saying her real name, she wouldn't have got a date with the nurse. So... Best of luck to you, Sarah. I hope uh, you find someone. I, ho- I hope he doesn't have a weird fetish. Um, uh, but you know I what? Know, I just <laughs> he's a nurse. He's probably around vomiting all day. So it's it's like a, a chef doesn't cook at home. You know, he probably he's probably not into vomit at home. That's uh, what I think. So well, good luck to you, Sarah. Yeah, I'm glad that you got out of that. Fuck off, Steve. I just hope that it all turns out right. For some reason, based on your life, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if it got so much worse from here. <laughs> and to the nurse, I know you're listening. You better treat that bitch right or you're going to be in update number three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be monitoring this situation. Good luck on your dates, guys. I hope uh, there's no more vomiting in your life from now. Only consensual vomiting, whatever they decide. Okay, well, I hope if he's into vomiting, but she's not into Look, can we just don't, just don't do it. Don't vomit you on any dicks, Sarah. You can't judge people's... What I'm not she, judging. What if this opened up a new door for her and she finds out that vomiting on dicks ain't that bad? Are you trying to tell me something? Oh, yeah. No! <laughs> oh, my God, no. Okay, moving on. All right. So, now I have another update. Um, guys, you might remember this from a couple podcasts ago. A guy unintentionally cucked uh, a, a man. So basically what happened was he was flirting with this older woman at his workplace, uh, ended up having sex with her because she said that her husband was okay with it. The husband also worked within the same company as both of them, just in a different building. Turns out husband was not okay with it or immediately regretted his decision. He thought he was okay with it and then regretted it. And then they started to get divorced and I told this young gentleman, stay the fuck away from that relationship. Yep. Stop having sex with her. She lives, one, she's in your office. Two, you're like 20-something, she's 40, so she's probably going to fall in love with you. Yeah, because that's logical. <laughs> I bet that's what this email's going to say. Uh, I've been spot on with the vomiting stuff. Uh, I bet I'm spot on with the cuck stuff move too. Move away, move away. All right. So, hey, Lewis, uh, Zach here. After the last email about the husband moving out and me being unsure what to do, I had a think and I came to the same conclusion you proposed. I told him to get the fuck out of that situation because they all work in the same company. That's a massive HR thing. I don't think you should ever be involved with someone while they're getting a divorce. It's just too messy. Yeah, exactly. No one wants that. You don't want to be the other person during the divorce because you're going to have to... Pick up the emotional pieces that the other person has left behind. Yeah, like they're they're really broken and hurt, and then also you could get murdered by the husband. I think statistically, after someone comes out of a relationship, it takes six months before their self esteem is back to yeah. a good place. But that's just coming out of a relationship. That's not a divorce. Not a marriage. Yeah, that's, that's not a, a broken huge marriage. Thing. You just don't want to be part of that process. Especially, it sounds like a regretful divorce. Like they tried a sex thing and it ruined their marriage. They thought it would be good. Plus, the lady was potentially cheating, right? Well, no, because the husband said he was into it. I would like you to have sex with this younger dude. Did he watch? And then it, no, he didn't watch. Um, then it did yeah. happen, and he found out that he fucking hated it, and it caused all of these emotional issues because, duh, they work in the same fucking building. So now they're getting divorced. And I told him to get the fuck out. So, uh, he's called this woman Sarah. So this is... <laughs> This is becoming a problem with this podcast where every girl is called Sarah. So this is a different Sarah. She's 40. She doesn't vomit on dicks or on buses. We should take a poll in your podcast group for a new girl name. I like Sarah. It's funny. No. Your, uh, your fan should override you. Can they set up polls? If people can set up a poll, can, set Facebook up a poll group. and choose a new name that Lewis has to abide by for a girl. It uh, can be whatever you want. All right. Anyway, we're getting through this email. <laughs> okay. I had told Sarah many times that nothing was guaranteed. So this is while they were having sex. Nothing was guaranteed. And in the end, I told her it would be best if we remained friends and nothing more. She went a little bit crazy when I told her, sending me walls of text, questioning everything that had happened between her and I up until then. Basically implying that I lied about everything and manipulated her into this, which I 100% guarantee that I did not do. Yeah, that's fucked. 
See, what I think what's happened is she thought she was leaving her husband for you, and you thought, man, this girl's pretty hot. Maybe I'll fuck her twice. Can you finish the email? <laughs> Uh, I made it clear that the reason for this was I didn't want to com- complicate things further by continuing, but she got it in her head that was that was because I was never attracted to her and just wanted sex, etc. Yeah, so she's dealing with hectic low self-esteem and her whole life is fucked up and she's putting all of that baggage on you. Mm. All this questioning and crazy talk made it seem like she thought we were low-key dating and the fact that I was talking to some other girl was equivalent to cheating. But they're getting back together, her and her husband. So she's not my problem. I've been dealing with a fallout from this for weeks. Fucking hell, I'm never getting involved with an older woman ever again. Thanks for coming on this wild ride, cunt. Have a shit one. Well, look, man, it's not older women that's your problem. It's married women. Currently married women. Even any anyone who's in a relationship. Yeah, don't fuck around with that. Even especially the guys, unless look. If if a couple comes to you and they're like, hey, I want you to fuck my wife, just don't. <laughs> just don't do it. It's weird as hell. It's only going to end in heartbreak. I mean, maybe if maybe if they're like, hey, I want you to fuck my wife, you could be like, I want you to show me 20 examples of where you've done this before and it hasn't ended in a knife <laughs> and a death. And then maybe I'll consider it. Only if she's a 10 and he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's my advice, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think, Jazz? Should you fuck someone's wife, even if they're a 10? Well, if they're a 10. I know, a 10's pretty rare. Yeah. Um, no, I'd just say that she obviously thought that you had something emotional going on. Yeah. <clears throat> and that, that seems to be... Because she's getting back together with her husband now. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. She thought she was leaving her husband for you, yeah. and then you fell through. So she's like, oh, I guess I feel sorry for him, man. The husband. Yeah. You well, don't know a... what he's been doing, though. Yeah, being an idiot. They both sound like horrible partners, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> um, all right, so that's the end of this has been the end, guys. Um, also, because it's been a couple of days since I recorded the first half of the podcast, I wanted to say that the announcement for this big project that I've been working on is going to be on Thursday, not Sunday. So I'm going to put out a new, probably about a 10-minute or so, probably shorter podcast on on Thursday. And also a whole bunch of posts across all my other platforms. Jazz, you know about it. Don't give any hints, but oh, what do you think? It's coming out on Thursday now. It's not coming out, but we're announcing it on Thursday. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I think it will be um, exciting. Yeah, I think yeah. it's... Uh, Very excited for you. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's come out of nowhere, and we've been putting a lot of work into it. Don't but, talk it um, up too much. People will be disappointed when they find out what it is. Uh, I know, I think, I think people are going to really like it, and I think it's going to be like, fuck, he's doing that? That's cool. So yeah, yeah, you are pretty cool. Stay tuned for Thursday. Um, until then, I will uh, have a shit one, and I really hope that you do as well. Any last thoughts, Jazz? Have a shit one. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>